Hi, one Soul Silver Seventeen here. Let me show you something unusual. And on the pictures, um, I made the thumbnail. And on the pay video. All right, okay. So here's the thing. Um, schoolwork is just being a pain. Um, I don't really have enough time to get into Black Clover. I'm trying to figure out some stuff before I have to. Hopefully, not retake this class. I'm hoping. Um. So, I'm. Basically, just having a hard time. I am technically able to watch, basically, Overlord. If you know what I mean, like I'm able to watch it, but it's like at night. I'm trying to watch a Black Clover during the day, um, so I can focus on my schoolwork at night. I'm just like my time of watching something. Because I want to try to get, like, I'm trying to get, like, caught up on Overlord because of Season 4. And Black Over, I know the episodes are just still there and I can, you know, watch any time. But, uh, yeah, I'm trying to get through what I'm already watching and then get to Black Clover separately. But basically, though, I decided, since I already said I was going to make this... You know, in the future, or I came up with these ideas, why not make it just so we, someone, well, everyone can watch before I go into Black Clover. So, yeah. I'm just hoping everyone, I'm just hoping everyone likes this. <laughs> um, because, how should I say this? Naruto and the village are going to be on thin ice. Not like when I mean by the village, I mean the villagers. They're on thin ice with Naruto. And is he gonna be like Ainz? No, he's not gonna be an overlord. Um, he's gonna be still a ninja, but some things are gonna be changing a lot. So, yeah. <sighs> okay. So, let's begin the story. Because I'm going to make this an hour, 30 minute long, or over an hour long, because I have a lot I want to get done in this one part. So, yeah. Anyways. This is, what if Naruto became Overlord? Well, I, I mean, technically, he's not going to... Yeah, I just realized what I said about he's not going to be an overlord, but he becomes an overlord. He's not going to do what Ainz did. That's all I'm just going to say. So, yeah. Anyways, let us get into it. Wait. Hold up. Heard something. It was just my dad's TV. Alright, sorry. Anyways. So let us begin this story. <clears throat> Where we start off is not in the Naruto universe. We are starting off in where Ainz and the rest of Nazarek are in another dimension. You see, it has been over 10,000 years for Ainz, Albedo, Demi, or Demirge. Um, what was his name again? How do you pronounce it? Oh. Oh my god. Oh, I knew I was going to mess this up. Co Kakotis. Yep. It's basically C O C Y T U S. Alright, so basically, yeah. Kakotis. Kai. Kakotis. Whatever. Kukaitis. There we go. There we go. Kukaitis. You know. Shaltir, everyone in Nazareth, many of the forces, though, well, technically, a lot of the undead soldiers are, basically have been gone. You see, they are in a dimension where they took off, well, how should I say this, it was bigger than what, you know, they could handle, a enemy that Ainz could not defeat, and they are retreating. While they are retreating, you know, Ainz is basically badly bruised and broken. You know, 
the enemy that basically fought Ainz and, you know, he lost to, well, I'm talking about Ainz lost to, is just looking at them going. Ainz is seeing them. Well, seeing, yeah, seeing the person that, you know, defeated them. And they just simply smile. But from the look in their eyes, it's a sad, you know, they're smiling, but they are sad. They know what's going to happen to Ainz. Now, if you're wondering how they get into another dimension, easy. After a long time of being in the world, you know, from the anime, and he took over it. He took over it. It has been 50 years, and he, you know, after just 10 years, he got tired. So he has Demirge, or what? Is that, I think I'm saying, yeah. No, Demirge. Yeah, yeah, I was. I thought it was pronounced demograph for a minute. Demirge, basically, to inv- try to invent with a combination of magic, alchemy, and runes. But, well, I don't think runes are there, so. Yeah, okay, mostly magic and alchemy. They were able to make a device that Ainz has the power with his magic, his mana. To basically transport themselves, technically all Nazarek, to another dimension. And they did this for countless se- years until they faced this one enemy. Now, we have uh, Albedo, Shautir, Demir, Kokaitis. You know, just a rival of Ainz. As. Wait, um, just trying to make sure I got the name right. Uh, give me a minute. As Sebus asks, My lord, what happened to you? And he's like, Sebus, we need to leave immediately. There's, <laughs> there's an enemy here that's way stronger than we thought. Our information was wrong. Which he goes, but my lord, you're badly injured. He goes, it does not matter. We need to leave. As basically, they are taking uh, Ainz to the infirmary. He goes, no. To the transporter. But basically then, Demir says, my lord, you're badly injured. If you do this, you'll die. He goes, it does not matter if I die as long as you all live. It's basically, before I'll be okay saying anything, Demir uh, yes, my lord. As, you know, basically, even though if they're, you know, they're supposed to listen to Ainz or Momonga, basically. It is also, you know, they're supposed to listen to him, they would, you know, want to protect him and all that. The mirror slinks, they will have enough time to save him after this. Well, Albedo has a bad feeling. It's all shouts here. But, eh. Okay, so. As they get to the transporter room. Ainz gets up to, you know, gets up to the, basically, how should I say, it's the device. In the center of it, and there's two crystal balls that he has put his hands on. As he starts pouring his magic, you know, into the crystal balls. As all of a sudden, the lightning starts to shoot off into either sides of the room. And all of Nazareth starts to shake. And in a split second, it is gone from the area it was. And then suddenly, we have Nazareth appears in the world of Naruto. Now, before I go on anymore, let me just say this. The worlds they have gone through is a lot. So imagine multiple different fantasy animes. Some mixed with even technology. Them conquering it, taking their resources, learn the technology, add it onto their own. And boom. You know, Nazarek has it. So, now imagine Naruto with, I don't know, magical guns. Like, I mean, technically, there are an anime. I mean, we literally have animes with fantasy and technology working together. 
Makes no sense, but hey, it works. So, yeah. So, I'm not, I'm not saying it's a good thing, I'm just saying it's in an anime, it's in a fantasy, that, you know, uses magic to power it, so boom. I'm just saying, but anyways. So, like I said, they arrive in the Naruto universe. They are somewhat close to the Hidden Leaf Village. But the only reason why it is not, you know, will not be seen by anyone is because it's under a camouflage. Now, Ainz is basically, takes his hands off of the crystal balls and grabs his, well, the staff. I'm a wand slash staff of the, you know, of his weapon that basically gave him admin privileges when it was a game. And, well, in the game, but, you know, now it's just a magical weapon. So, well, totally magical step. But anyways, besides the point. So, anyways, as he grabs it, he goes, Albedo, call everyone to the throne room immediately. And she goes, uh, Lord Ainz, we need to get you... Do not worry about me, Albedo. Just listen. That's basically not the magic that's basically... You know, would keep him calm and stuff when he's angry. It's not working. Which, Albedo is shocked and she goes, Yes, my lord. So, they call everyone. They get to the throne room. As Ainz is sitting on, on well, the throne. He goes, Everyone. I have... I have an announcement to make. The enemy we faced was strong. Stronger than we could ever imagine. All the information we had on them was false. They knew we arrived in their own dimension. And they planned to defeat us or even kill us. So we had to run away. Of a great cost. Which... Kytus... Is basically, my lord, what is wrong? What was this great cost? Which everyone that's in the throne room is, you know, curious. And he goes, I have no way to say this, but the great cost was my very own life. Which everyone was in a shell tear saying, Why are we not getting you to the hospital then, my lord? Well, not to the hospital, but to the med. Well, to a medic or, yeah, to a doctor. And he goes, show to you. There's a little time we would have to even heal me. It was a curse. But, you know, wait, anyway, yeah. Yeah, a little time to heal me. And besides, it was a curse. It would drain all my MP and all my HP. I had to pour all my MP into the teleportation. And into this new dimension. And now, because I was already low on the HP, I only have enough time to do a few things. All the ones who were with me in battle will be healed. As he, you know, as basically he, when he hits the staff on the ground, I know I said he had no HP, I mean no MP, magic, but mana. Basically, the staff is starting to glow and a light from it. I know, I don't think it uses, I think it has its own magic, so that's what I'm going with. And so, everyone that was in the battle heals. As all of a sudden he grabs from his inventory and drinks a mana potion that, you know, runs back up his mana. Even though I, I think he can do it anyway, so. I mean, even though he's a skeleton, it should work still. But anyways, like I am saying, as he goes, now... My last few things I shall do. All of you will be asleep. And you'll live. As basically, before anyone can say anything. When he basically casts a spell. They all suddenly fall asleep. And then he casts another spell to make sure they will not age. The only one that is awake is Albedo. Albedo is confused 
And then before she can say anything, he, Ayn says this, Albedo, I know this may be hard for you to hear, but I need you awake. I need you to gav gather all the information you can on this world. For what I'm about to do has never been heard of anyone from Nazareth or any one of the supreme beings. But she goes, my lord, what are you going to do? As he basically says, I will cast a spell for only someone that is truly worthy to enter the tomb of Nazareth to be summoned to this throne. As soon as they enter for the front entrance, no matter who they are, demon, angel, human, elf, you know, no, you know, so on and so forth, any race that you can think of. And no matter what, I want you to help them. For they will be the next ruler of Nazareth. As she goes, what? As he taps this staff again on the floor. As this does take the rest of his MP, well, nearly all of his MP. As he uses two spells. The spells to allow this to happen, like I said... And to, cam to keep the camouflage on. And then he basically also has all the people that were in the throne room that were asleep to teleport to their rooms. Now, everyone in Nazareth is asleep. He does then tell Abido that she's going to be alone. She should try to learn to mingle with the people of this dimension. Learn some spells that would help her out. And then he basically also casts Hologram. And, well, a hologram of himself appears. And then he basically starts changing the hologram. And then it says, soul, like, soul splicer. As part of his soul splices into two. As he then, you know, plate, you know, says, soul transfer hologram. Basically, I don't know, I just, he basically uses a spell that will allow his soul to become a part of the hologram. And now, basically, the hologram spell where some like turns into a scroll as he basically gives this to Albedo and he goes have this give have, blah, give this to the person that'll be the next rule of Nazareth part of my soul is there so I'll be able to teach them everything I know they will be the exact opposite of me and my greed for my selfishness was the cause of all this problem. Which I'll be just about to say something and all of a sudden Ainz's hand is starting to disintegrate. Where she is, you know, shocked. She basically starts to say I you know, basically you know, don't leave Lord Ainz. I'll be nothing well you you know, all this stuff that, you know, You'll say it to someone that you care about or love when they die when they're dying. And he just chuckles. He goes, I'm sorry, Albedo. But it this cannot be saved or stopped. Everyone will die eventually. But through my magic, you all will live for a long time, longer than usual. Enjoy your life for me. As Ainz finally turns to dust. And Albedo starts to cry. A lot. Now, we skip to 150 years into the future. 200 years. Yeah, this is kind of before they, she lands. In the time period before the Henley Village was born. So it's kind of close, kind of not close. It's kind of close to the Henley Village. That's all you need to know, but it's basically, they're just starting to build. So we're Hashirama and Madara around. And now, we have into the present time of Naruto Uzumaki. He just graduated the, uh, well, exams to become a ninja. He's been taking on his D-rank missions. And, well, this is technically... Um, few, basically a few, 
well, actually a week before, I was trying to remember what I wanted this to be, a week before, they have the wave mission arc. That we have Naruto crawling you know, out of the ditch. With how he looks. Well, he's basically, he's bruised, he's bleeding, his eye is, well, red. His left eye is red and, and it's badly damaged. He's having prob he sees red in one eye. And their eyes, well, can see, but it's like, he had hit, like, it's like swollen, his face swollen a little bit, so it's like hard to see, as, you know, he's just aching all over, he has a fruit broken bone in his arm and his one leg, he's crawling to a tree to help himself to get up, as when he does, you know, get to the tree, he basically puts his hand onto the you know the tree and pulls himself up with all the strength he has. And when he's finally standing, he just says, <coughs> "Those <coughs> villagers, they really tried to kill me this time. They always tried, but they were really close, closer than ever." <coughs> And I mean, so he starts to limp away from the ditch that they threw him into. So we have now what happens only about maybe fifteen minutes later. Naruto is well, t- fifteen minutes beforehand. Naruto is sleeping. He's basically asleep in his room. He's having a dream about ramen and as you. Know, Asking Sakura out and basically she's saying yes. Now, while he's sleeping, a villagers, a good maybe fifteen, a good fifteen and three slash four, tuning in, are basically with them. They get to Naruto's apartment. The tunings lockpick the room, or the door, and go to the apartment room. So, as soon as that happens, they immediately rush into the room and grab Naruto, you know, well, into the apartment, and then all the way to his room, grabs Naruto, and immediately drags him. When Naruto basically, you know, feels himself being pulled out of his bed, he's immediately awake, but they suddenly start, well, tying his, you know, basically gagging him. So they drag him out of the apartment. They drag him out into the open. And they drag him all the way over to near the gates. But into an alleyway. And they start beating him. Some even have basically beams of wood. And starts beating him with it. Heck, someone even stomps on his left arm. And right leg. And basically, they just start wailing on him. They're not killing him, but they're just basically trying to beat him to death. And because of this, Naruto's just thinking, why? And they just hear, you know, the saying, The demon can't get stronger! We won't allow it! No longer! Basically, they don't even care what's going to happen to them if Haruz and Saratobi founds out. So, after Naruto is trying you know, to stop, that's when someone breaks his arm. Then when he's trying to kick someone, breaks his right leg. And they start wailing on him more. And then, well, he, basically someone finally hit him in the head hard enough to basically knock him out. And they just keep on doing it. Until they think it's enough. They don't feel a pulse. Basically, the ninjas look at the civilians and they nod. They basically pick up the body and get out of the village as quickly as possible. And so, they basically made a ditch ahead of time, and they throw him in there. And they just say, <laughs> the demon's finally dead. And basically, they just leave. If they even waited just a little bit longer without feeling a pulse, they would have felt, well, when they, if they would have waited, 
a little bit longer. When they did not feel a pulse, they would have felt a faint one. As Naruto was there for about, like, like I said, 15 minutes, so a little bit. And then he woke up, and then he drags himself out of the ditch, and like I said. So, he's limping his way through the forest. He just can't imagine they would do this. He was a ninja of Kona, he's sinking. No one in the right mind would attack a ninja. But, but then he remembers, oh wait, I'm the QB to them. They don't concern me a ninja, they concern me a demon. So I guess it doesn't matter what I do. They won't set me. They won't let me do anything. They'll keep on hurting me, trying to make sure I don't get stronger. And if I do, they'll just try to kill me? I can't imagine this. Do I want to be Okage of this village? He just starts to think that. Then something in his mind is telling him... It's not the cube, it's not Karama. Just something in the back of his head is saying, don't give up on your dream. The other side is telling him, don't give up, but don't be a, from, you know, a Hokage of Konoha. It's basically, what pops into his mind is this. He can become a Hokage, but just not of Konoha. And if he wants to still stay in Konoha, he'll become the Hokage. It's just like, he has a choice that he's thinking about now. But... He says, uh, can't think about that now. And so, when, while he's, you know, dragging himself, or technically limping himself through the forest, he does kind of think that he knows he ain't you near know, the Nine Tails, and yet everyone thinks he is. So... Why was it then if he definitely was the Nine Tails and he just didn't know? He probably would have been mad and, you know, take off the you know, take out the village. He kinda chuckles at that a little bit. He does think that the vill like, you know, humans are mean and cruel and heartless. And if the QB technically hates humanity or humans, he can't blame the Nine Tails. And besides, the QB kept, keeps on healing him. So, he just thinks of that. And Kurama is hearing his thoughts, which is kind of surprising. So, when Kurama just thinks this kid's not gonna, you know, say anything that's good or useful or funny or entertaining, he's gonna go back to sleep, he thinks. So then he hears Naruto saying, QB, thanks. Thanks for keeping me alive after all these years. Which, that kind of surprises Karama. Which he just says, This kid, what is he, an idiot? I'm the reason for his suffering, yet he's spanking me. Humans are weird. So he goes back to sleep, but if you, if basically Naruto was in there, you can see Karam has a little smile on his face. So Naruto is still limping, you know, for the forest. He's thinking of everything that has happened: him, Sasuke, and Sakura, Kakashi. Everything was in canon, and I mean everything. So kind of Kakashi trains Sasuke more than you know Sakura and Naruto. And he's kind of just thinking if Kakashi trained him a little bit better, he could have maybe, you know, actually got that attack or that beating without a broken arm and leg. Besides, these people keep on praising the Uchiha for nothing. It's just irritating. So, so basically, he's kind of having flashbacks. Of everyone, you know, praising to Chiha and so on and so forth. But you know. So, after a little more walk, you know, dragging, well, particularly limping his way through the forest, he comes up to the entrance of Nazarick. He basically sees, okay, if you basically look up 
Um, or have you ever, if you guys haven't even watched Overlord, basically you would see a pill, like three pillars, and then something, but basically another, uh, rocks, uh, making a circle on the top of those pillars. You know, the pillars are part of that, and it's turning, and then the entrance of Nazareth's tomb. And then basically Nazareth was like, what the? This was never here before. It's been raining for a while. It's been also... Wait, <laughs> there's no lightning. Good. I, I don't have to worry about the lightning. I can keep... As all of a sudden, he hears lightning and thunder in the background. He goes, I just had to open my big mouth, didn't I? <sighs> I'll say I'm going to have to go into there, wherever it is. So he limps his way over into the entrance of Nazareth. He's basically losing a lot of blood, and even though his wounds are healing, it's still taking a, still taking a bit. He's bled out whole, you know. He was bleeding a lot, and he still is a little bit. So when he gets to the entrance, well, then you know, he gets down the stairs slowly and carefully, and about you know, about to walk further into Nazareth, all of a sudden a glow happens underneath his feet and teleports him. Into the throne room. In which some alarms went off. And Albedo is rushing there. To the throne room. And so. When she opens up the door. is when Naruto arrived. And he hears it. He basically turns around. And she sees Naruto's face. You know bruised. You know face swollen. Eye red. And then he just says. Can you help me? And you know, he falls on, you know, to his side. Which Abido is in shock, and she rushes over to him. And well, an hour and three minutes later, Naruto is starting to wake up, and he basically sits up slowly. Well, after he opens up his eyes, he goes like, uh, "What hit me?" But like a hit by a rock. Which then he hears someone says, Oh, you're awake. Good. And then he goes like, huh? So he looks forward and he sees, well, a woman with black hair, golden eyes, horns, the wings, and wearing a white dress with basically gold, like, web in front. And he goes like, um, who are you? And she goes, oh, well, that's the first intelligent question you would ask first. And she goes, huh? And she goes, never mind. My name is Albedo. You are? Naruto. Naruto Uzumaki. She goes, hmm, an Uzumaki. I haven't seen one in a while. Well, usually Uzumakis have red hair, but... You are a half-breed, so it makes sense. Which she goes, wait, what? She goes, oh, yes, you don't know. Well, Nar- Uzumaki, well Naruto Uzumaki, allow me to explain after you eat something. And he goes like, yeah, sure. So, when Albedo leaves the room, just to go grab something for him to eat, Naruto was like, okay, I don't know where I am, but she, it looks like she healed me. Let's see. As, basically, he moves his left leg and his right arm. He goes, now my left, as when he looks at his left arm, it's perfectly fine and healed. So he moves his fingers, they're working fine. Then he looks at his right leg, it's working fine. He smiles at that. But the only thing is he's having trouble is seeing in his left eye. He doesn't understand what's going on. It's everything's blurred and having trouble seeing it. Which he's kind of freaking out about this. So it doesn't take a lot, take um, you know a long time for Albedo to you know get back. And when he starts pondering and thinking what could happen, because it has never happened to him before. Albedo does arrive, and she goes, hmm, what's wrong? He goes, I, 
I'm having trouble in my left eye. She goes, oh, eat something first and I'll explain everything to you. All right? He goes, all right, fine. As much as she gives him food, but Naruto is hesitant to eat it. It's not, it's basically, it's one, it's not ramen. And two, he doesn't know if it's poisonous. Which, Abi was looking at him and was like, what's wrong? He goes, it's, it's nothing, it's just, I like ramen. It's the food of the gods, you know. And she looks at him and she goes, and you also think it's poisonous. He goes, um, no, I'm not going to be mean and <laughs> rude as he basically scratches the back of his head. And she goes, well, to be fair, it, in your life, it probably has happened to you. So, here, I'll eat it. And basically she takes the spoon and, well, eats it. Basically, there was two spoons. She basically said, you know, after she eats it and, you know, she goes, see, not poisonous. And he goes, right. And he basically takes the air spoon and he starts eating. And, well, to his surprise, it's really good. So, in a matter of a few minutes, it's gone. He basically says, well, uh, thanks, Albedo. That was a really good meal. First good meal I had in a long time. Which, she basically smiles and, well... Abito does know who Naruto is. She has basically has seen him in the past, see how he was treated, know about his burden, the tendon, well, his ten, you know, tendon, um, in the Nine Tails, basically, basically she knows about everything. So she doesn't understand, but she had a long time to research and read and you know find out a lot of information. So she knows what's going on, basically. So, after she basically nods and takes the plate and the food because she would have brought it on a cart, so she puts it all back on it. She goes, Now, I did what I could for you. I healed you perfectly fine. The only problem was your eye. It was badly damaged. And, I, well, I couldn't fix it. I'm not a doctor. And, well, you you heal faster than others. It's quite amazing for a human. And then, basically, Naruto goes, wait, what? A human? She goes, yes, an insignificant bug. But, you're different. And which Naruto goes like, wait, how am I different? She goes, I'll explain that later. And he goes, uh, no, please explain now. And she goes, no, nope, later. And he goes, uh, I'm not going to win in this, am I? She goes, nope. He goes, okay. So, she basically explains about, well, her theory on why it's not healed and stuff. And then after he, he just sighs and be like, how am I going to stay as a ninja? I know Kakashi Sensei doesn't. You know, fight with both of his eyes, but still. This is going to be a problem for me, especially with my kunai throwing and shuriken. Which, she's looking at him and she goes, I don't know what's going to happen, Naruto, but... There's some bigger things that you need to understand. I didn't just help you to be kind. If you were any normal person... Well, well, any normal human, I would let you. Well, would have let you die or killed you myself. Which again, Naruto goes again. Why am I so special? She goes because of my old lord or master, basically. So she kind of explains who Eins out, you know, Momonga slash Eins was, and tells him about what he did. Which, his eyes widen. So he says, wait, 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 wait. So, this is a tomb. I even forgot to mention, he did tell them all about the NPCs, you know, and, 
Idrisil. I think he would eventually... Nah, 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 scratch that. Scratch it. Scratch that, nah. Okay, so basically, yeah. So, North of Zayway, wait, So, the Tomb of Nazareth, uh, you know, what this place is, has multiple floors. And I am the ruler of it? And no one here is human besides one person that is technically half human. Where she goes, yes. But you you don't like humans, right? She goes, no. I find them pathetic. Insignificant. An ant that needs to be crushed. And he basically says, and you will just... What? Have me rule here? Become, I don't know, a king or something? She basically is looking at him. She goes, What do you mean? He goes, And you're fine with this? She goes, Oh, no, no, no. I'd rather have Lord Ainz still be around than have a human rule over Nazarek. But something happened to him and he's gone. Partially. Well, partially. Yeah, partially. Well, partially, whatever. And. Well, through his spell, he only will allow someone that's different from him, the opposite of him, and basically will rule over Nazareth, and you are him. So, it does not matter how old you are, you are the ruler of Nazareth, and as ruler, I am obliged to listen to all your orders of command, my lord. As he was, no honorifics or saying my lord or anything. Just, no, it was fine. And I don't want to rule over you. She goes, oh, you don't have a choice. He goes, can, can I finish? She goes, uh, yes. He goes, I don't want to rule over people. And besides, I don't know if I'll be a good ruler anyways. I'm just 13 years old. I'm still just a teen. And I know I want to be Hokage, but still, it's a lot of pressure on a 13 year old hand. I don't really know the first thing about ruling over someone or a whole bunch of people, giving them orders. And when she's looking at Naruto, and then she's, you know, think to herself, he's right. I know I'm supposed to help him, but still, he's right. Besides, those villagers in the Hand Leaf Village didn't allow him to read books or gain knowledge. They stunt his growth. So, hmm. It looks like we have to have more of a task, a hand, on this one. <laughs> what did I get myself into? So, she basically sighs and she goes, Alright then. I'll help you. I am the basically the the floor well part of the floor guardians and the one who basically leads them, so I can easily help you and understand everything. Now, allow me to get you some new clothing. Your clothing is ripped, so I'll be back for a minute. As Basically, she just says, and just rest for a bit, okay? I'll wake you up. As he nods, and, well, that's what he does. He basically, you know, falls asleep. Meanwhile, Kurama is basically sleeping. As in, he basically gets, well, basically gets a, a sound, yeah, basically for the water. Gets a ripple for the water as he basically lifts up his head. He's like, What's happening? Who's here? He basically senses something, but he doesn't know what. Through basically the entrance to the room where the cage is, he sees a little glowing light. And then all of a sudden, a beam of, you know, hits him. As it basically, all of a sudden, he starts to glow as he starts screaming in pain. As the light dims and disappears, Karama is still screaming and after a little bit he stops now after sorry give me a minute 
Okay, so after that, it's all over and done. Kurama basically goes back, you know, basically on to all fours because he was, like, rolling around and screaming, like I said. He was on his back, so after he gets back on all fours, his legs, he goes, What the? What is this knowledge? How do I understand this? As then all of a sudden he hears the footsteps. As what happens next is he sees Naruto. He goes, what the? Where am I? Oh, why is it so damp in here? It looks like a sewer. As then basically Chrono goes, you! Did you do this to me? As Naruto sees the fox. And he was like, wait, what the? The, the Nine Tails, how are you here? What's going on? Where am I? Why am I a sewer? As basically Krama has a tip mark on his head because he thinks to himself, okay, he is not the one who did that to me. Which then he sighs. He goes, listen here, kid. You're in your mindscape. And basically, you already know who I am. So... <sighs> Hello, brat. Which Naruto was like, uh, <coughs> Wow, you're really pissed. What happened to you? He was like, Oh, I don't know. I was in a lot of pain. So, can you tell me what happened to me? He was like, uh, How do I know? It's like, So you really weren't the one who shot a beam of light that made me go, you know, made me had that in like so much pain. Where she says, again, how should I know? Where then he sighs. So, basically he says, well, whatever it is, probably was no problem. I can probably handle. As then all of a sudden he realized, he has a lot more information about things he does not understand. And then he basically gets a particular thing that basically he's looking at Naruto. He was like, oi. Your eye. Do you know what happened to it? He was like, yeah, technically I'm blind in one eye. Because of those villagers. Why? He goes, well, it looks like I have information on this thing called mana. I don't know what it is, but it has been this weird source of energy that's been going throughout your body recently. Which, he was like, really? I don't feel any different. Which, Krama was basically just looking at him and was like, <sighs> Well, when you wake up, your eye is going to be fixed. Besides, the albedo woman's here. So, wake up. As basically, he sends Naruto out of his mindscape. And, exactly as Krama said, When Naruto woke up, albedo sees his eye... It looks brand, you know, it looks like it's, you know, it was, like his other eye, but there's a slight difference to it. Naruto has this, how should I say this, this weird ring around his eye, this light blue tinge to it, which I'll be, you know, just staring at for a few minutes and goes, oh, <laughs> sorry, you're awake, which he does nod. It was good. Now. Here's some clothes. I'll wait outside for you. Which Naruto grabs clothes and you know says thanks. So after he changes and he gets outside, she basically starts showing him around Nazarek. Well a little bit. She shows him the different floors and the different guardians and such. And well, after that they go to Ainz's old office. The one where he basically did his paperwork and such. And she basically tells him a little bit about their adventure slash conquest, you know, conquest. As Naruto basically kind of just, how should I say, looks disgusted, basically, by what he hears, which she goes, is everything alright? He goes, just some of the things you talk about. I... I can't believe someone would do that. Which he was, what? He is an overlord. And they do conquer and take pillage and take, you know, what they want. 
And we can also just size, but like, but still. <sighs> I'm not, I'm not that type of person. I want to, I don't want to conquer. I'd rather help and create and. I don't, I just don't get it. Why do I even want to do that? Which, Alvito does not, and you just think, understandable, he is a teen. He doesn't know about the real world that much yet. And he is different from Lord Ein's. I cannot be mad or fault him. And she goes, well, you are not him, so I do not expect you to do any of this. But tell me, will you be an overlord? In which Naruto's just thinking, well, it technically says out loud, if I'm going to be an overlord, do I have to conquer and take over things and, well, plan and devise anything? Such as what Lord, well, technically this Lord Ein's guy did. In which she goes, no. You can do what you think is right, and I'll follow you, no matter how much I don't like it. And he just sighs. And he goes like, wait, what time is it now? She goes, well, you arrived here basically around 1 o'clock. It's been 2 hours. Well, it's been an hour and 30 minutes, and then... when you Until you woke up from your sleep, and then another couple of... Another hour of, you know, everything. Of showing you around and explaining it. Another 30 minutes to an hour or so. So around maybe 4 or 5. Then he goes, crap, Gigi's gonna be so ups so worried about me. Which shows, huh? Uh, Hokage. Uh, he's like my grandfather. She goes, oh, okay. In which... He goes, how am I getting in contact with him? She goes, hmm, there's a way. Allow me to, well, get a scroll. So, he goes, huh? Just, and she just sighs and just says, wait here, it's a magic. Not one of your ninja scrolls. He's like, okay. So he just stand there, you know, sits there and waits. So she comes back with two to three scrolls. Basically, it's magic window, a message, and, well, view. And then all of a sudden, basically, they see Haruzen talking to many different ombus about telling them to find Naruto. And so, what happens next is, after the ombus leaves, Haruzen is sitting in his chair, you know, sighing. And you're like, what, Naruto, where are you? What happened to you? In which, all of a sudden he sees a... When, basically, it looks like a mirror, glass appearing in front of him. Where he goes, what the? So he's about to, well, get into battle position. And then all of a sudden he hears, Naruto says, Chi-Chi, can you hear me? Which, he's like, Naruto, where are you? And he goes like, well, <laughs> that's a long story, Gigi. Um, how should I explain this? In which Abia just sighs and says, allow me to explain this. Basically, Abia basically is, she was basically out of the view, so she comes into view, which Aruzan just shocks. He was like, what are you? She goes, that is irrelevant for right now. My name is Albedo. I am... Well, how should you say this? Naruto's assistant. Helper. At the moment. Which Haruzen is shocked and he goes, What? She goes, this is, lo this is the location of where Naruto is at the moment. I want you to only come here with two Anbu escorts. You'll be allowed into... Well... Nazarek, you'll be. I'll be immediately waiting with you with Naruto. So hurry up, Haruzen Saratobi. 
this will be a very long task, and I want to get this out of the way. And when she goes, wait, how do I know Naruto is going to be safe? And she goes, I will not harm my new m lord. I'll make sure he's protected no matter what. So, hurry up before my patience is runs thin. And she, she closes the viewing window, and basically, two um, after Sir Toby, you know, stands up, waves his hand to the side, two Ambu appear, and basically, he doesn't know the location when he, before he even leaves the room. The window glass starts to basically hit the table, starts to fall down, hits the table, by basically locations. You know, are, are formed, which Horizon says to Ambu get a map, and which they do. So, they get the location of where it was, and yeah, they just leave. Meanwhile, with Naruto, he goes, Um, don't you think that was a bit rude, Albedo? She goes, What? I do not care for most humans. I'm only tolerant of you since you're my new lord of Nazarek. And he goes, Ouch. So even you two hate me. And where she stiffens at that and she sighs and she goes, I'm I'm sorry, Naruto. I'm just not used to humans interacting with them much. And in which Naruto just smiles, but she can tell it's a fake one. He goes like, hey, that's fine. I mean, it's really is fine. I kind of understand what you mean. Which, basically, it's a kind of a fake one, but, you know, it's he's, it's half sad and half not sad. Then he was like, basically, he was like, what I mean by, you know, he knows what he, you know, she means. He was like, you're not very well liked by people, so people will probably hate you. I can kind of get, kind of get it, since, well, as basically he drifts off into thought and shakes his head, he was like, it doesn't matter. It's in the past. Well, come on. Show me else what I need to know. If I am going to rule this place. <laughs> Seriously, I'm not going to get used to that. In which Albio does not. So, she basically shows him the armory, the library, and basically the throne room. Along with the staff of Ainzao Golden is there, basically. And so, yes, okay, so those things that have a, a trigger that you said shoots a projectile that is a concentrated ball of something called magic, which goes, yes, huh, and it seems you have it too, Naruto, he was, yeah, my, uh, the QB told me. She goes, huh? You, you met the QB? I thought you were met it already. Which, he goes, wait, you knew about my attendant? And she goes, hmm, yes. I have been around for over 150 years. In this dimension. Well, in this world. Which his eyes wide and he was like, uh, um, uh, how? Magic, and also I'm a succubus. He goes, a succubus what? She goes, yeah, you don't know about that, do you? Which he goes, most of the things here we have are basically demons, and they're called, well, tail beasts. I found that out from, well, when I snuck into the library one time. That's all the information I got. Which he goes, well... Where I come from, there's different types of creatures. So, you don't have it here. He goes, alright, so, that's understandable. And, um, as you said, there's other people here. And I did see what they are. What they are and all I gotta say is this. Some of them, I, won't, I will not want to have them be awake in this, well, world. And which she looks at him curiously. And she basically goes, like who? One would be Shaltir. 
I, first off, I don't know how she'll act when she first sees me. Unlike you, she may attack me. And, as you said, she's a vampire. And from what you described of her, I... I can only see her coming out if I... Well, we really need her, like Demi or Demirge. One, she obviously would not care for human life, and two, uh, I don't feel it should be a problem. In which she does nod, and then goes, What about Demirge? And he goes, Blatant and obvious. He wants to experiment and, you know, further his scientific intelligence. Well, scientific theories, and as you said. And when she does not, and he goes, and he doesn't have no care for human lives, no matter the age, of their child or old, you know, old and the elderly. And when she does not understanding, so she goes, everyone else we perfectly fine besides those two, and he does not. And she goes, well, I can see that. But do not worry, Naruto. They will awake only when you want them to. That's what I found from, well, Lord Ainz. And when she goes, huh, alright. In which she goes, well, I'll be helping you how to learn magic, and I do have a scroll that will help you to learn it. Even faster, but we have to go. Vi you know, go to the entrance for Haruzen Saratobi, which he does not. So they teleport to the entrance. They only wait about maybe five minutes, and they arrive. The Ambu and Haruzen are shocked. They never knew this place existed, and when the Ambu see, well, you know, Albedo. They start to go for the Tontos as Haruzen tells them, you know, gives them a sign to stop. As Naruto is waving at Haruzen as, you know, they're walking forward. Now, Albedo is waiting as she normally would. You know, hands, you know, in the front. Basically, as she goes, you arrived just on time. And he goes, it took a while to get here with my old age. She goes, understandable. Now... If you please, well, well, come a little bit closer. It has to be in close proximity. Well, proximity. And which Nambu and, you know, her, you know Haruzen understand. Well, yeah, closer. As basically they all teleport to the throne room. Now, Haruzen and the Ambu are, you know, like, freaking out a little bit. Naruto goes, you get used to it, Gigi. I did. And he goes, it was that space time jutsu? And was, she scoffs at that. She goes, no. She's not, you know, saying anything like that. As, basically, before her wasn't keeping going anymore, it was, Gigi, just don't ask questions. It's too hard to understand. Believe me. This ain't no jutsu or chakra base. This is something all new. And where she does nod. She goes, now, let's go to the dining you know, area, and we can have a little chat. And please, Ambu, take off your mask. It's, how should I say this? Disrespectful in a home of someone. And in which Haruzen said, you know, wants to say, you know, tell her I'm sorry, but, you know, secrecy. And all that, which... Basically, when he was about to say that to her, she just glaring at him, and he just gives Dombu a nod. Okay, so, I think I would, the people that he's on blue, so I think I'll just give his Yuki, um, not Yuki, I mean. Okay, Yuga and Yamato, I have to remember her name. Anyways, so, when they do, Haruzen just sighs and, please, and says, please, lead the way. And she does not. And so, they get to the dining 
room and oh, food is not there, but they just sit down. She goes, all right, then. You have many questions. I am only obligated to answer only a few of them since I am not part of the village. And you cannot claim, well, we are in your territory since we have been here when the village was first started. In which Haruzan's eyes, you know, widen along with Yugao and, you know, Yamato, so. And Naruto would be like, <laughs> yeah, kind of shocking. But she, uh, proved it. In which Haruzan doesn't say nothing, but he's thinking, how? So, she goes, alright, please get on these with, with these questions. So. Arizon starts, you know, asking, like, who are, you know, who are you? How did you even get here? And what is this place? She answered her name is Albedo. She is a succubus. She basically answers how we got here. Teleportation magic. And, well, and the other question. Basically... The questions go back and forth for a little bit, and he gets answers. But he can't get like, nothing more after some details and such. But the final question is, he goes like, What are you going to do with Naruto? She goes, Oh, simple. He is the leader, well, basically the ruler of the great tomb of Nazareth. And as that, he, has, he will be ruling over it. Which, Haruzen blinks. And he just looks at Naruto. Then he looks back at Albedo and he goes, <clears throat> I'm sorry, what? He'll rule over the tomb of Nazarek. I know it may sound stupid. Believe me, to me it does too. Which Naruto says, hey! In which, she goes, am I wrong? He goes, uh... uh no, not really. In which she goes, exactly. Now, as I was saying, but my previous lord made sure only someone that was the pure opposite of him and was worthy to take the throne of Nazareth will even be in this area. So, After that, you know, Haruzen doesn't, you know, doesn't fully believe it, but she just says, I mean, you don't have to believe me. Your silly ninjutsus and whatever else you would use won't even work on me. I mean, come on. You really think you can take someone on that's been nearby your village for how long? Which, that kind of does make a point to Haruzen. She goes, I even entered your village so many times. Including the other villages. I had plenty of time in my hands to gather all the information I need. But Haruzen's eyes widen along with the, well, Yugao and Yamato. So, yeah. Anyways, after that, she just saying, so... I just want to let you know what was going to be happening. Along with, I am going to be personally accompanying Naruto around and making sure that he's alright. So, I would like for you to have me on his, you know, Genin team. Which, but it's a three man team and I had to put you in the. She goes, I will not leave my new lord you know, alone. Yeah, I will not leave my new lord alone. I am supposed to keep him safe. So, please, Hosen Serutobi, try to argue with me. And besides, I know that Sakura Haruno girl isn't, well, isn't doing much. So, do you really think she's a good member of the team that Naruto is on? Which Haruzen doesn't say nothing. She goes, exactly. Now. 
I want to be on this team. And just tell Kakashi that it's a trial for me. To see if I'll work well with the... Well, with Naruto and Sasuke. Because from what he's seen from Sakura, she is not improving. And it doesn't look like, look like she ever will. So... I am her replacement, which her reason just sighs. And you're like, alright. What else? There's, well, some of the stuff Naruto's going to have that may have some of the villagers want him dead or want to steal it from him. Just know, everything Naruto would do will be in self defense. And your council members shouldn't be able to do nothing about it. If they do, they'll just have to answer to me then. Which, Haruzen just looking at Albedo. She's just saying it like, with a straight face and he just nods. She goes, good. Now, I'll show you around. What Naruto is going to learn. Only. Then what you need to know. In which. They just nod. So. Basically Naruto follows her. She shows the library. She shows the armory. She shows even the training grounds. And. Well. Basically she just shows him. An arena. And then that's it. Just now. That's all you need to know for right now. So. Basically, she teleports with the three out, and she does tell her, We'll be back in two days. Goodbye. And, you know, she basically just has her, and, well, apparently he teleport her, teleport him near the barrier camouflage, so they leave as Yuga puts back her mask along with Yagato, Yagamo, whatever, whatever. And she just says, Are we. Going to leave them there, leave him there. Where Tarusen says, if she has all the information on each village, then that means she has stuff on us, like she said. We cannot risk the safety of our home, so we just have to listen to her for now. In which she nods. So after that, she teleports back into the room they were in. And Naruto asks, so. What are we going to train in? She goes, well, first off, we're going to try to incre you know, increase your intelligence. Then you're going to try to learn a little bit of magic. And next, well, maybe we'll awaken Kokaitis and have him teach you how to use a sword. Which Naruto is, you know, just getting in with excitement. So, yeah. Alright, I said I wanted to make this an hour 30 minutes. But, I'm starting to fall asleep. I can't, so, if you guys like the video, you guys have a nice night, day, wherever you are, and bye. I'll try and make the Asta video later in the week. So, see everyone.